Hey, I'm Jake Goble. This is Mike Kincaid. Welcome to the Orange Cactus Coffee Show. And today, Mike has something really exceptional for us, and that is the Flair Espresso Maker. So they did give us a discount, I think, in full disclosure. Absolutely, yep. However, the wow factor is not diminished by the fact that you got kind of a discount on no, it. No, no. Uh, it shows up in a nice um, box that seems, you know, custom made for it. Mm, I love boxes. He does. Uh, and inside that box, you have this carrying and case. And the case looks... So when you open it, is it cool. up, That's you've very got cool. this. Look at that. That is so sweet. You got the eggshell, they got an eggshell yeah. foam to yeah. keep it nice. Within the kit, depending on which one you go, you get your um, your cylinder, essentially, your brew cylinder. It's got the porta filter or the basket for the coffee grounds on the bottom. Mm -hmm. And then you've got the cylinder for the water. And then within the cylinder, you have the piston. And we'll show you how that all works. This one was a kit, which means that I got, got two. two. So you can kind of uh, use one and then, you know, just set it aside and, and go immediately to the next Spin one. the next one. And pull a shot. Also what you get is this is kind of the uh, standard um, tamper tamper that comes with it. It's a nice plastic, but it's also used, which is clever, uh, for when you're done, you can flip it over and you can use it to uh, push out, yeah, that way, push out the piston. So, very cool. And then they give you this uh, little funnel that you can put on the porta filter, the basket, and uh, use it to load the grounds. Um, but with this particular kit, um, we got the stainless steel. Um, looks like it's solid core tamper. It's, for, it's cool. Quite it's, heavy. It's there's there's something to it there. There's some heft to there it. There is. It, it's nice to hold. And it also seems like there's a lot of mechanical engineering that went into this thing because all the way all the pieces fit together. You know, I'm normally not a big fan of a whole bunch of pieces and different things, but this the the fact that they're manufactured with metal and I mean there's something I don't know just there's substantial about yeah. it yeah it really does feel high quality it, it feels a little different than like some of them some are plastic and to me I just don't like a whole bunch of little plastic devices fitting together it seems like something's gonna break but this has got you you know problem. metal rubber argh. now they do also have this is the piston which is plastic but they also have a metal one if you're like I don't want to use any plastic you can <laughs> get their metal piston um, as well so keep that in mind and then we've got in there two little uh, screens one for each uh, brew setup and then this is fairly new this is the black signature edition Ooh, you know we had to have it in black that comes you know we had to have it in black. with the copper I like the copper too and that's the setup right there I like the copper top obviously it's nice. And then on the bottom, you've just got uh, your little stand plate for your, for your cup. So that's it right there. Okay, so let's pull a shot, right? Because that's what we're here to do. Mm -hmm. So first thing is we've got 15 grams ground. We kind of kept the same, um, you know, coarseness setting as, as uh, our normal espresso shots would be. Um, the key with this, according to Flair, is it shouldn't require a whole lot of force. This, they, they say it's not an exercise machine oh. and you shouldn't have to really crank. Um, it says not to exceed more than 70 pounds of pressure. Um, so if you're really pushing on it, you need to uh, go a little bit coarser in your grind. I see, but it's still, it's supposed to get nine bars of pressure. Yes. Just through the mechanical. The design of the, the, design the leveraging, of yep. Now, and the piston. This is, you, how long have you had this guy? I haven't had it very long, only maybe three days. So this is really an initial observation. Impressions, yep. yeah. We yeah. pulled a few shots with it. And that's it. I've tried to read and watch a few reviews, but by no means are we And now you're gonna pull experts. it backwards so they can see it. Um, well, we'll see. Yeah. So I got the grounds in there. I like to just, just push it down just a little bit. Get them down and then take the funnel off. Looks pretty good. It, it looks small. It's not bad. I mean, this is 15 grams. You could probably go a little bit more. What do you usually put in the Breville? About 16, yeah. you know, about so. 16. So I think it's probably gonna give you a little more of a ristretto shot than, than the, I think it a does. regular espresso machine. Screen then just goes on top. Plops right on top of that guy. That goes right there in the holder. Wow. Next, 
what I have been doing, I don't know if it's always the best, but I put the piston in just a little bit and flip it upside down. And then pre-wet it? And then pre heat it? Yeah, exactly. We're using some pressed coffee. Their Twitch Espresso is, uh, is what we've got going. I made a trip down there and decided to buy a couple bags. It, uh, yeah, it was a $100 day at press. A $100 day? <laughs> That's a good day. That was a good day. It was a $100 day at press. <sighs> All right, then you just take the cylinder. Goes right on top of the porter filter there. And the nice thing is there's a line on the inside here um, that, that you just fill the water up to. They say pretty much keep the water the same and adjust, you know, your grind and your dosage. Hmm. Um, so if you want to... You know, yeah, let me fill this puppy up here. you see it? I see the line. They say be sure to use hot water just off the boil. We're using um, third wave water. So just give us that. There you go. Excellent brew quality. I'm doing this backwards, so forgive me. So you just put the piston in. What I've been doing is just running a timer just for the sake of a thing. Jake, sake How of having a let it go. So, all right, so here we go. So we're gonna just get a cup under it before we rock. So the first thing they say to do for the first five to 10 seconds, just kind of pre-infuse. So I essentially just- A little bit of pressure there. A little bit of pressure. Hmm. Let the uh, grounds all get wet. And then from there, you just kind of push through. Yeah, it's got like one little spout there. One little spout that it's coming out of. That pressure feels pretty good. This is an awkward position to do it. Yeah, but it's worth it so you can see it. But I would say I'm not pushing too hard. Now they did mention, and it was, um, public information that they're working on a bottomless porter filter. Okay. Which Very would be cool. kind of cool. Yeah. Because people have been asking for it. That would be cool. So. There it is. Look at that. Do not exceed 70 pounds or 32 kilos. It's interesting because I feel you. Those are instructions. They're there for a reason. But I have no idea what 70 pounds of pressure feels like. You know what I mean? Like if I'm really cranking on something, they say, well, Jake, how hard are you cranking? I, I don't know. I don't know. I wouldn't know how hard I'm cranking. But probably, if you're cranking really hard, exactly. you're doing it 70 is a good amount. Give it a try and see what yeah. you think. It's got a nice uh, nice crema on the top. Yeah, it sure does. These are decent espresso glasses Let's here. Let's see. And there's about 37. 0. 0.8. 0. 0.8, yeah. We'll tell you for sure here. That's good. It's smooth. Smooth. It's really good. The other thing that um, came with the flare, which was kind of neat, they say if you're going to leave this on your counter and not, you know, pack it away each time. 39. 39? They're about 30. Yeah, right around 30. Mm -hmm. They give you a screw that you can uh, screw this all together and, and just keep it permanently on your counter. It looks so, beautiful. It really does. I think the copper, the black, uh, the cylinders. Now, the only thing that I've found that's a little tricky um, it's clean up seems to be easiest just in the sink. I just let it run under some cool water for a few seconds to cool it down because the cylinder is still quite hot. And then you can pull it apart mm -hmm. quite easily and, and just rinse out the, uh, so the you puck. Don't, you don't like push the puck out. You just kind of rinse it You all don't. Out. Now you can. There is a technique that I did a couple times. When you take this apart, and I'll show you on this one. When you have it apart, you can actually, if you want, blow on the little hole and it will shoot the puck out. Hmm. Um, but that's, I think we should show the people that right now. It could be a little, a little awkward. I think I'd like to see that. Let me just For slide me. it to the side. Yeah, I'm not get you I'm this not guy that. right here. Okay, let me try it. You want to try it? Oh yeah, oh. that's too. That is too good to pass up. Let's see if we can... Is it because you're not as full of hot air as I am? Okay, well you can edit this out if you want to, but I'm ready to try it. There's the puck. Well, it looks like it's gonna fall out. It does. There. There. Yeah, yeah, just you can just muck it out. Mm -hmm. Give it a blow. Okay. Said, you told the folks you were gonna do it. Come on, you can do it. It's hot. Oh, is it? There you go. Ooh. Boom. No problem. No oxygen. I didn't have to blow that hard. Maybe because I'm full of more hot air. Than well, that you one was slipping me. a little bit out yeah. too. Yeah. Yeah, it was good. So, so it's it a nice little puck. It's not bad. It's a nice little puck. When you do it that way, it comes out fairly clean. But then you just give it a rinse. That, now you gotta, yeah, you gotta wash it because I've had my nasty lips on this. So having multiple is nice because then you can just mess with that later. I even thought about getting another two, three. And nobody has to see you. <laughs> you 
blown out your pocket. <laughs> yeah. I think it's very cool. I think it's very cool. How much, what's the approximate retail? Right around 200. Right around 200. I think it varies on which model you go with, how many cylinders you yeah. get and, and so forth. But yeah, I think you're shooting right around 200. So you're looking at, I think it's cool. I think the device is cool, but I think for the money, you know, you're looking at two, you're probably, for your grinder, you're probably looking about $400 yeah. for, to, to get it at home. I think that's cool, but then, I don't know. It's... I think as far as manual espresso. The manual espresso, it's beautiful to look at. It's good espresso, or it's, it's good coffee there. Uh, if it's getting nine bars of pressure, I guess, you know, we have to call it espresso. So I'd say it's good. I just, it's a little pricey, you know, because you can get, a regular espresso machine for 150 bucks more, mm -hmm. 160 bucks more. Yeah, you can so it there. It's hard, it's hard. It's, I guess it depends on what you want. It's definitely, like if you are a collector of different, you know, awesome coffee mm -hmm. devices, then I'd say the flare is, is for you. If you're just trying to get affordable espresso, I don't, I don't know if that's, you know, if it meets that. You definitely have to be ready to do the manual steps. And for me, the biggest is the cleanup, right? The cleanup takes probably the most because, you know, putting it together is kind of fun. Pulling the shot it is fun. It looks cool. Yeah. And then you yeah. just got to clean up. You get better at it. Now, the thing that the flare can do that we haven't tried yet um, because it's manual is cold pressed espresso. That's, see, that is to me, to you, the real, the real thing that I want to experiment with this is can you do cold pressed espresso? And how good is it? And how good is it? Exactly. So maybe we'll do another follow up video after we've tried and, and figured out if espresso. we can get a good recipe out of it. Yeah. But I think for the price, for the build quality, the sweet case, everything yeah. you get. All the touch point, the wow is everywhere. I also think it's cool how portable it is. I fold it up, put it in the case, and I can take it home, yeah. take it to a friend's house. Uh, you just need the water. You did that today. That's where we've got the Lido, ground it up. We used uh, the flare. And the, the cleanup is actually not that bad. If you look at what you have to do to maintain an espresso machine, the, con the cleaning, mm -hmm. the, the routine kind of maintenance that you have to do on it, this is not that bad. So there it is, check it out. Uh, they've got a few different color schemes. They've got different uh, cylinders, different metal, different tampers, and uh, they seem like a good company doing good things and they've got you know plans for the future coming out with some uh, other devices and things to improve your coffee game yeah. so thank you flair thank yep. you for watching we appreciate it till next time I give the flare a four and a half out of five cacti. Ooh, that's pretty high. It's pretty high, I'm pretty impressed with it. I think I would agree with you. Um, I don't know what perfect would be, but for what it claims to do mm -hmm. and the quality of the device, it's right up there. So four and a half as well. So good job, Flair. Now, we'll sign off.